is Francesco Catafi. He is from Utrecht University, and he is going to talk about formal integrability of geometric structures. Okay, does it work? Yes. So thank you for the introduction. I thank the organizer for uh, inviting me. And I think we should all thank them to organize this such a wonderful conference and also the speaker for, uh, for last week uh, for, uh, for the school. That was also very nice. So. Okay, so let's see. Today I will tell you something about what I did in my PhD together with my supervisor, my supervisor, my supervisor Marius Krajnik. Uh, and as you can read, it is about uh, geometric structure. So we already had uh, two nice talk with by Rui and Ivan about uh, geometric structures. Actually, they studied uh, a class of geometric structure, this G structure, which is something very important and well studied in the literature. And still, there are a lot of interesting problems, like the one that they solved. In my case, uh, I will actually focus on a wider class of geometric structure, which is what they call the gamma structures. I will explain what they are. And, uh, but this is something that is uh, much less studied. So, I mean, the theory is uh, very much undeveloped. So, most of my talk will actually focus on definition and these and basic things. And then at the end, I will say some, uh, some first result uh, about this actual, uh, this integrability, that uh, form of integrability that you can read in the title. So, let's see. We start with uh, some very basic, uh, basic remark. We all know that a smooth manifold, it is defined by a smooth atlas, which is this collection of chart, uh, uh, this open set and chart. And what is the key property is that if we consider the changes of coordinate, this should be diffeomorphism between open set of Rn. So by diff lock of Rn, I just denote the set of all the diffeomorphism between open set of Rn. And what is the key remark? Is that many kind of geometric structures that you are familiar to use in many fields of geometry, uh, they can be described by a smooth atlas where the changes of coordinate, they satisfy further properties. So one could say that they belong to some special nice subset of this diff lock of Rn. And this special nice subset is precisely what is a pseudogroup. So more formally, one can define a pseudogroup of any manifold X. You can always think X equal to Rn because that will, all the examples will be in that case, but in general it can be done in, uh, in this greater generality, which has some property which resemble the one of a group. So in particular it contains the identity and it is closed under the composition and inversion. Of course, in this case, we are working with diffeomorphism locally defined, so the composition is not is defined only when uh, the domain and the codomain match is suitable. Otherwise, it would be indeed a group. And then there are some extra axioms that are instead more uh, shift-like, in the sense that uh, one can ask about uh, that uh, the, this gamma is closed under the restriction of the elements to open subsets of their domain. And similarly, it can be closed under gluing. I mean that if there are many elements uh, in gamma that glue to a bigger diffeomorphism, then this element should also be in gamma. So this is the kind of object that, we, that, that is very useful for our purpose. And once we have it, then it's natural to just call a gamma atlas uh, an atlas where the changes of coordinate belongs to gamma. And then a gamma structures is an equivalence class of these gamma atlases. So this is really, if we take gamma as all the possible diffeomorphism between open sets, uh, then we get the standard definition of a smooth structure and smooth atlas. Now, in our case, we want to consider instead special gamma that will, uh, give, the, 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 that will uh, give the geometric structure that we are used to consider. So let me give you one example, and then uh, you will understand how from that one to build uh, all, the, all, the, all the other that you can think of. We can consider the following. The diffeomorphism of R2n, which preserves the standard symplectic form of R2n. So this means that it is the, it, it is the set of symplectomorphism, the of local symplectomorphism, and they form a pseudogroup. It is a pseudogroup of these uh, canonical symplectic structures. And once we have that one, then we can define, we can study what is a gamma structure for that pseudogroup. And it is very easy to see that it corresponds to a two form which is closed and non-degenerate. So it is a symplectic structure. And now what is the pattern that we recognize here? Every time that we can think of some nice ge canonical geometric structure on Rn, for example, which is easy to describe, then we can consider the symmetries of these structures. So the diffeomorphism that preserve it. Think, for example, have the, the isometries for a canonical, for the flat Euclidean metric. Think at the diffeomorphism that preserve uh, the standard, ca the canonical uh, complex structures on R2, or R2 n of the, or think about the contactomorphism, this kind of objects. They all are pseudogroup. And then the gamma atlas for those pseudogroup would be precisely the geometric structures, which is defined globally on a manifold, but locally is modeled on this local mode on R n. And so this gives indeed symplectic structures, uh, complex structures, contact structures, and so on. 
And now, so this is the, the kind of geometric, the formalism of, that we want to use. But what we can say about that, that uh, first of all, this, is, this does not give you the entire picture because uh, we don't know yet then what is the almost version of this, uh, of a gamma atlas. What do I mean by that? I mean that uh, we can describe this symplectic structure, but we would like to describe also symplectic structures without the condition that the differential of omega is zero and study separately that condition because this is really a different kind of problem. It will be a bit clearer in the, in the, in the following. But the first thing that really one should do is to make sense of this almost version of a gamma structures in the full generality for a pseudo group, because it's clear what, they are, what, they, we do, what we do have in the example. But it's not clear, it has not really been written in the literature, a definition that works for any kind of pseudo group. So this is the first thing I want to do, and then later we'll, we'll study this integrability problem. Now, how to do that? Well, the problem is that pseudo groups are very nice, but uh, to work with them, uh, one has to take a bit of care. So what we'll do? is to actually translate this language of pseudogroup into some other language, which, is, which use ligropoids, which we are more familiar with and will be simplify, simplify the, 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 the work. In particular, I will recall you this theorem by Effliger, which says the following. It establishes a correspondence between all pseudogroup on X and a class of ligropoid on X. More precisely, technically, should be the one that are effective at all. I don't really want to discuss these two, these, uh, these two conditions. They, they, you can think they are just some uh, technicalities. Ligroupoid, uh, usually I would remind what they are, but I think that we, have already, we had already uh, wonderful courses last week, so probably there's no need. But what I want to say is, what is this ligroupoid that you associated to a, to a, to a pseudogroup? It is the, co the so-called germ groupoid, meaning that for every, every element in gamma, you can consider the germ of that function, of that diffeomorphism, at any point of that domain. So remind that the germ is really the, uh, this, uh, this equivalence class that encoded the entire behavior of a function around that point. And you can see that since you can compose diffeomorphism in gamma when the composition is allowed, then similarly you can compose element in germ of gamma when the composition is allowed. So this really has a structure of groupoid, and then one can actually put a, a topological and a smooth structure and check that this property of effective et al, they are also satisfied. And then also one can go back, of course. Yes? Yes. Can it be non-compact? Uh, 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 Non-countable, sorry. Uh, the, uh, I would say that, yeah, it is, I mean, here I'm assuming that as usual, when you study Lee groupoid, you don't really ask, ask all the condition of Hausdorff, comp, uh, second countable, etc. So it could be quite, the, the topology is very weird. Uh, so, uh, yeah. Um, Okay, yeah, so I would say this one is, this is what tells us what they are, Lee groupoid, uh, Lee pseudogroup as a groupoid, but then we can also study gamma structures from this point of view. And what are gamma structures? They would correspond to principal bundle for the action of the groupoid germ gamma. Now, we all know what are principal bundle for a Lee group action, but in this case, we just consider a Lee groupoid action, so this actually has been mentioned also last week uh, by, by Matthias when talking about uh, Morita equivalence. You can just make sense of what is a principal bundle for this groupoid action. And again, I can give you explicitly what is the principal bundle that one consider. It is, the it is the bundle given by the germ of the element of A, so the germ of the chart. Because indeed, if we take a chart, you can also locally compose it with an element of gamma. And so if you pass to the germ, still you can define an action. And then you can check that this action really is well defined, is nice, is smooth, and it is principal. So you really get some principal bundle over M in this way. Now this is the way that we, we, we look at gamma structures. And why we like, to, we like to look them in this way? Because of the following, that any gamma structure induces not only that principal bundle that we just saw, but an entire tower of principal bundle. And what is this tower? On the top, we have really this principal action that we just described of germ of gamma. But then we say, why do we consider the germ? That's a very strong condition, of course, germ of a function. We can just relax this condition and consider something much weaker, which remembers only the value of the function at the point and, for example, the first derivative. So this is what is known as a jet. So we can consider the first jet of the pseudo gamma, and this defines a groupoid in the same way of the, that, uh, that we discussed the previous one of germ, and similarly, the first jet of the charts. So again, there is an action, this action is principal, and this defines this nice principal bundle here. And then we do not have no reason to stop the first jet, we can go higher in the tower. So we can consider the second, the third, the K jet, this will all be principal bundle, up to the infinity jet, which uh, is just a bit more technical, but one can make sense uh, what, uh, what it means. 
So this is really this tower, meaning that all these arrow here, they should be surjective submersions. And, uh, and now this is precisely what gives us uh, the, the idea of understanding what should be the weaker version, this almost version of a gamma structures. The key remark is that this is not only a tower principal bundle, but this is a principal sub bundles. What do I mean? Is that all this guy here, for example, J1 of A, is inside, naturally, the first jet of the few morphism between open of M and X, which is a principal bundle for the big groupoid that contain all the, diffium, the first jet of the few morphism between X and X, and similarly for all the higher things. So what we can do is to try to say, okay, now I don't have necessarily an A, I don't have necessarily a gamma structure, I want to look at something weaker, so I will just remember that there is something here that may not be of this form, so may not be the first jet of, uh, of an atlas, but still it keeps important, important data, the fact that it, le it lives inside here, and there is an action of this groupoid there. So here we arrive finally to the definition, a ga an almost gamma structure for us, well, that's simply a principal subbundle, P, which lives inside this first jet of element of, uh, of diffeomorphism between X and M, which has a principal, which have a, a principal action by this, this structural groupoid, J1 of gamma. And now, here I said there is no, L, no gamma atlas involved. Of course, if there is a gamma atlas, and if P comes really from that gamma atlas, meaning that it is the J1 of A, that is when I call it integrable, because it is really the one induced by, by the gamma atlas. Now, what is the problem here is that integrability is a very difficult condition to check. So what I want to, to show you is that uh, we can try to approximate it and at least study some weaker condition, which is integrability only up to a certain order. I mean that I just say that it is integrable up to order k if I can find some subbundle q, which is at the k level for the action of jk of gamma, which uh, uh, projects down to the, first, uh, to the first derivative, so it just forget the higher order derivative, and projects down precisely on P. So that this map really here is a subjective submersion. And now if I can do this for any kind of order up to the infinity, then I just call it formally integrable. So this is really the formal integrability that we had in the title. And now in this way, one can see that uh, in the common example, one see what one expect. In the sense that, for example, an almost symplectic structures for this gamma simple of uh, the pseudogroup of symplectomorphism that I discussed before, you can get uh, what is called an almost symplectic structure, which is a two-form which is non-degenerate. Not necessarily it is closed. The closeness condition is precisely, one can see that it is precisely equivalent to the one integrability, which in this case is really sufficient to have all the other higher integrability, so the formal integrability and even the fullness. Here, this is just, of course, specific to this example, but it works really for many other, because you can think that, I mean, for in other cases, uh, you will have almost symplectic, uh, oh, sorry, almost complex, uh, and so on. Now, uh, how, to, how to study then the formal integrability? Well, here we arrive, uh, no, sorry, here I want to just first to, to remind you um, this, uh, this relation with the structure I just described. Sorry, cup a bit if I have been too, a bit too fast. So what I did, I, I introduced this, this, this uh, class of gamma structures and uh, say that, okay, these are a particular case, they are the integrable one of the almost gamma structures. And then the integrability problem, I said, is to understand when this comes from the one above. And then we said, okay, let's split the problem in two by introducing this intermediate class, this formal integrability, formally integrable, almost gamma structures. And so what we will focus is on the formal integrability problem, which is this arrow here. Now, again, you say, I'm cheating, like many other speakers in this conference, but uh, there's not a problem, uh, uh, there's not a big problem at least, because this other arrow that, I, uh, that I'm forgetting now, the good thing is that it is true in many cases meaning that in the majority of example, common examples one can study, you can see that there are some other theorems, some other important results in differential geometry, like the Darbu theorem or the Neulander Niermer theorem and this kind of, of result, which really can be, uh, can, are equivalent to this, to this arrow. So these are all theorems that rely heavily on analysis, meaning that really to study this problem is a different kind of problem than this one. This is why I wanted really to, be, to, to separate them and I will focus only on this one. And well, I will focus, yes, Sorry. sure. Yes. Uh, this J1 gamma. Uh, no, it is not. Sorry, because yeah, that, that's a very important difference. Because I mean, the one exactly. So, um, uh, you're right. Actually, when I said uh, when I arrived here, I said that these maps here are subjective submersion only up to here. 
this map, because the, the one on top, they had this very weird topology, so indeed it's a bit weird that uh, this guy here, is there is a surjection, sorry, is su uh, yeah. there is a surjection here, because it contains more but not a submersion, because, uh, because this is finite dimension and this is not, basically. Uh, that, that's a good remark. Um, yeah? Uh, yeah, so I would just say that, one, that we focus on this formal integrability problem. And now here, uh, what we did was actually to study the obstruction for this formal integrability. So the obstruction are the following. We, we, uh, we will not say much, of course, but it just uh, uh, because, you, because I, I do not have time to explain, to give you the proof in detail. But uh, we managed to produce really some, some sections of some vector bundles. And this section, the vanishing of this section will be precisely the obstruction for the formal integrability. Meaning that there is some h i of gamma that will be vector bundle over m. Now I cannot tell you what they are, but if they are called h, of course that's not uh, that's not a random name. So you can guess that it is connected to some cohomology. So I'll just drop the name Spencer cohomology for people that know what it is. And then uh, one can uh, using this one, one can consider this section, and one see that basically this the first one vanishes if and only if uh, p is one integrable. The second one if p is two integrable, and so if they all vanish if p is formally integrable. And yes? Do all the sections exist? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I would say that the sections do exist before. Yes, because, uh, no, 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 sorry, no, it's, uh, that, that's wrong. I mean, you could, because this is really, I mean, you have to, to build them one at a time when, when the other one vanishes. Uh, that's wrong, so uh, that's a good remark. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, the theorem is stated as a consequence of the one that is, a, is, an inductive, is an inductive procedure. So you just really do the first one, then you keep iterating, yeah. Um, yeah, and I want to just mention that in the case that we, that we expect, for example, for almost symplectic structures, then one can get that the first one is really this differential of omega. So the one that we, that we know should be zero and is the actual obstruction. What is nice is that then for the other obstructions, they are all zero because there is no more obstruction. But the way that one can see it is to just study this vector bundle here, this H1 of gamma. So because the pseudo group of symplectomorphism is some, has, has some nice property, has some nice form, we can really show that all, the, that all this vector bundle, they are zero, and therefore all the possible section that will be the obstruction also vanishes. And this is something that also happened in many examples. In that if, you see, if you can see that the, that, uh, that the pseudo group gamma has some nice properties, then you just know by, by default, by, uh, you just know by the beginning that there will be only one or two obstructions at the very, at the very, at the very uh, beginning point and nothing else in the higher level. Just now, yes, sure, sure. Yep. So I guess you using the Mm-hmm. Well, just gamma, also J infinity of gamma depends on just gamma, and that's yeah, if I understood. That's true, but, uh, <laughs> can you write this HI gamma? Uh, Using the J infinity, you say? Well, no, because these are really some, these are really finite dimension in the sense that what, uh, that the J infinity of gamma is, is just a way to say you can keep going on higher and higher. So it is one of those uh, pro-finite dimensional manifolds. So you really just see, you, you just use it as a way to Pack together all the other, all the finite dimensional step before. So what you do here is really just starting for the first level, then the second, then the, you, you not really have an obstruction that you see takes value in something using the J infinity. It is, it's an inductive process. Okay. Um, yeah. So I mean, now what I wanted to do was just uh, since I, I don't want to really to give you the proof, but I want to say uh, what is the main ingredient in this proof, and uh, which I, I mean for me it was actually more even more important than the actual result because the result is what you expect, of course. It just uh, it is difficult to reach it. So what we do, as, as the, we, we already mentioned, this is an inductive procedure. So the key step is to just uh, given some p to find something on the top which uh, will do the job, and do the job means meaning. Uh, being a J2 bundle that projects down over P. So this, and so we, and to make sure that this does the job, we have to, do, we will find precisely the obstruction for that to be the right guy that, uh, that, that will solve our problem. Now, how to do that? Well, doing it directly is really, is, is, is a bit difficult in the sense that one could try, okay, we have to define what is this P in term of, in, what is this P1 in term of P and gamma. And, uh, and yeah, you don't really have, uh, doing it directly, you can really not distinguish what is relevant, which data are important, and which are not. Because here you could, there are a bunch of stuff that you could use. So we, what, we, what we did is the following. 
we just, first of all, uh, notice that any almost gamma structure P inherits the Cartan form of the jet bundle. So what is this? We just know that any kind of jet bundle admit a specific one form, which is called the Cartan form, which is very important in the theory of PDE. So it can be studied for study, it can be used for studying solution, for studying symmetries, and so on. That's a very explicit form that one can write even in coordinate. But we don't really care about the actual form. We just care that it exists there, and it has some properties. Now, these kind of properties can be formalized in a more abstract ways, uh, which we will say we will say later. We just let's notice another thing that the same Cartan form can also be done on the J1 of gamma. So J1 of gamma is also fit inside the uh, one J. So there is also a Cartan form, but this there is something extra because there, this, this J1 of gamma was a ligropoid. So it means that we have a multiplication, and one can see that this multiplication is compatible with this form. So being technical, this I'm, just ask, I'm just saying that this form will actually be multiplicative in the sense that was explained also by Tiago last week in the, in the course and also been used in other talk uh, this week. Then there is even something extra, that we have these two forms, one on P and one of J1 of gamma, that they are also compatible with the action, because there is this principal action. And now, uh, this is really something on the spirit of uh, a symplectic groupoid that acts on a symplectic manifold. And uh, you can ask that the action is compatible with the two symplectic form. It will be what they call an Hamiltonian action. So this is really something similar. Because, alge because algebraically, there you really can write the same, the same formula. The only difference is that here, we work with form which have coefficient. So one thing I didn't mention, this is quite important, this Cartan form is vector valued. And now the fact that it has coefficient makes actually all the form and the computation a bit more complicated. Whereas, I mean, for symplectic, at least you work with form without coefficient. And now here, as I was mentioned before, one can, what, what, uh, what one can do is to just forget the fact that we are working with some jet bundle and just keep the important properties of the Cartan form. Technically, we say that a Fafian bundle is this abstract notion encoding this jet bundle P with the form theta. So it is just a, a surjective submersion with a form satisfying some properties. And similarly, a Pfaffian groupoid is the abstract notion that, that, uh, that encodes this kind of groupoid with a, Cartan, with a Cartan form, which is compatible with multiplication. So it is just the multiplicative version of a Pfaffian bundle. Now, these two concepts have been introduced by Maria in her thesis a few years ago. And then also what I did was building up on those and to build the theory of another object, which is the natural, uh, the natural union of the two, which is a principal Pfaffian bundle, where you have also this other property here, this compatibility between the, between the two forms. And now using this, uh, this, this abstract language, one can develop a theory of prolongations for these, for these structures, a prolongation which is directly inspired by the theory of prolongation that we have for PDEs. And in this way, we really know in which way to explicitly construct the prolongation using the form, instead of actually really meddling there with the jet, not knowing precisely what, what not, not, not seeing clearly what are the objects that we have to use and what are not. So in this way, we can just really give a definition of P1, see what we, mi what we miss in order to arrive to the end, to the, in order to arrive to the, to the actual uh, object that we want to study. That we, uh, so this, this, sub this uh, principal bundle at the second level, which is an with an action of J2. Uh, and we can see explicitly what the obstruction will be. Will be some T1 that appears in this way. In principle, this, this obstruction will be something at the level of P, so it is a section of some bundle over P, and then we use the principal action to make it go down on a section of M. And this can be repeated then to any other higher level. So this is really the, the main tool that we, that we use for this proof. And, uh, and yeah, I think I just want to take one more minute to tell you that, I mean, of course, this, as I said, is, very, is some very beginning of this theory of gamma structures because there were not really many results in the literature. What the people studied before were just some particular cases when the pseudogroup have some extra properties. So uh, there are a lot of other stuff that, uh, that one could, uh, could try to, 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 go, to do with, um, in this, with this formalism. So for example, one thing that I already did uh, the bit was to study Morita equivalence of these gamma structures. So one can see that if, the two, if you have two pseudogroups, which are Morita equivalents, and then you have to be, what do you mean? Well, you can consider the jet groupoid and ask that those are Morita equivalents. Then you see that the geometric structures correspond to each other at the almost level. Does they correspond also at the integrable level? No. So that's very interesting that, I mean, there are really counterexamples that this is, no, the, the, is not true, that integrable almost, uh, in, that gamma structures correspond to each other. And so one would like to understand condition when this is true. So for the moment, I have a sufficient condition, but I think more can be said to, uh, if one understands better what's going on. 
Then another thing, for example, would be to study the other arrow, when formal integrability implies integrability. And as I said, this is really a different kind of problem because it does not use this cohomological technique. It must use some analysis. So here, for the moment, I, I just translated this other problem into, into, like I pushed the problem to understanding when a certain sequence is exact. And now the, the idea is mainly because that certain sequence should go on the line of, the, of a recent result by Yonutz and uh, Roy Bang that about the rigidity of PDs with symmetries. So the hope would be to try to apply those techniques so that uh, to see what can be, what can be said in these examples, in, in, in this case. And then talking about example indeed, because that could be a fair question, one thing that I haven't looked yet but uh, I would plan to do to, would be to understand how we can get some more interesting example also in the non-transitive case, I mean when gamma is a non-transitive pseudo group, that come from Poisson geometry, because a Poisson manifold do not fit in this framework, because uh, you don't have really a local model to study. But then there are all these other interesting classes of Poisson, uh, Poisson manifold which have, some extra, which have some extra regularity. For example, this log symplectic, which we know that indeed they do have a local model. Actually, they have two according to where you look. So in this way, you can define some pseudo group that normally would be non-transitive. Then, of course, in this case, you have to make, we have to make sense of what does it mean then to be integrable? What is the almost version? So that, yeah, I don't know yet, but I mean, I hope that maybe next, uh, <laughs> next time I will be able to tell you some answer of, uh, of this question, if in the meantime, then I will find a job. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> thank you.